Welcome back, Internet. So you can probably already tell, this is uh, not a spinner video. I kind of feel like, uh, I think it was Aaliyah who did that song. Uh, shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step to, something like that. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step to, step to, step to, step to, step to. Step. That's fine. Actually needs to be glued down. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Uh, little green stuff in video. So uh, what is this guy here? This is um, kind of a little project, a little idea I had, uh, especially after hearing some of the stories in the uh, Stormcast Eternals books. And uh, before I actually go too farther, too much farther, um, if any of you guys have started following or checking out the spinner videos, if you look at some of my older videos and aren't sure what's going on, this is uh, uh, Warhammer, uh, Age of Sigmar, Hobby Time, kind of where my roots are uh, for my uh, YouTube channel. So big shout out to anybody that's stuck around and doesn't like the spinners. Feel free to skip those, but I've decided I think... Uh, you know, it's sometimes it's hard for me to, to stay dedicated to this, and I'm into a lot of other things, so I just kind of want to put out whatever I'm into at the time. So there might be other videos around some of the camping gear and stuff like that that I'm into, um, anything I happen to be into at the time. Um, so just to kind of get that out of the way. So thanks if you stuck around and hate spinners. Um, thanks if you stick around and hate Warhammer but like spinners. Uh, thanks if you stick around through any of the other ridiculous stuff that I do. So... Uh, anywho, so, yeah, so I had this idea, this concept of a, um, you know, there's Torla, or I forget his name in the story, but he's basically um, a really badass uh, Nurgle guy. He was converted to Nurgle, wasn't really happy about it, and then uh, Sigmar kind of saves him. Um, so they take a Nurgle guy and basically turn him into a Stormcast Eternal. I'm like, what about the opposite? What if Nurgle managed to corrupt uh, a Stormcast Eternal? So the idea was... This is more just an idea in my head in terms of modeling and then what would go on behind it. Um, but I just thought, like, Stormcast armor with just, like, Nurgle stuff just getting squeezed all out and looking all gross um, would be a pretty, pretty cool idea for a model. Uh, and I'm also realizing that uh, Warhammer's got that new Shadow Spire game coming out, um, you know, later on down the road and much smaller model counts, so, like, doing, like, super custom uh, Nurgle-type guys I thought would be, uh, you know, pretty sweet. I'm sure there'll be some sort of Nurgle for us. I'm sure I'll find some way to use these guys, and if not, they could be Blake Kings and Age of Sigmar, so. Um, but before we do a little bit, let me kind of go over what we've got going on here. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, did this just like anything else, kind of built up in layers, worked on one spot, let it cure overnight or later on in the day. Um, each of these toes, for example, was a different session, so I did that toe. Um, move the light over here like this. Um, I did that first toe, waited for it to dry, did the second toe. That way the toes really stayed in place, because as you're kind of, you know, pushing and working with green stuff, it likes to, you know, you gotta have to push on a little bit to get into space. Uh, this fourth toe, which is actually kind of supposed to be broken off, and you're seeing kind of the just the bone inside there, and then a little tiny pinky toe. Again, super little look. That's my thumb. I'm sorry about the cuticles are in kind of rough shape right now. Um, super teeny tiny little toe, but there's actually detail uh, on it. Um, and then we've got the, you know, the foot just kind of oozing out. Um, I didn't have enough Stormcast Eternal pieces, um, so I kind of had to do some of these kind of custom. So I had to do these back leg pieces because I didn't have an extra spare leg. Um, you know, this upper leg piece, and then you got all the meat just kind of ooze now between the armor. Um, all this back fat coming out. Didn't have an extra back piece. Somehow I had an extra front piece. I'm not sure what that was from. I wonder why I had an extra front piece instead of a back piece, but that's what was in the kit. Um, you know, clipped off a bunch of the arms so I could, uh, you know, had to do a little leather strap and just skin and fat and all kind of gross Nurgle stuff, doing its Nurgle thing. So, um, scuffed up some of the armor so that's actually some of it was clipping issues um and just kind of went with it to damage it um you know so it actually you know it's going to be like all nurgle and, and broken up so um yeah i think i'm actually going to redo a lot of this hand coming out here and make it look like kind of a big claw um and then have him holding on to maybe some other head or something and, and just have stuff dripping down um, almost like a water effect kind of oozing out of maybe a screaming head or like Nurgle pus coming out of it. You know, all the gross stuff. Maybe have guts coming out, I'm not sure. So that's kind of where we're at. We're already five minutes in and I haven't even started doing anything yet. But um, kind of wanted to set the groundwork for where we're at. Um, also, I might have mentioned this, but anytime you're using an armature, um, getting some something around it, if you've ever tried to sculpt on like a, you know, a, a paper clip, as you're pushing the green stuff, it just pushes right out of the way. So looping something around it like that uh, makes it so the green stuff will stay in place as you're trying to sculpt it. So <clears throat> I've done a bunch of Nurgle stuff in my videos. Um, and Nurgle stuff is pretty easy, all things considered, to sculpt. You just kind of go in there and just hammer at it. 
uh, make it look gross, poke around once you get a few techniques, but I haven't really done anything with, um, you know, this flat, uh, oops, this flat armor type stuff and, and trying to get something actually kind of a little more precision, a little more precise. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to kind of start squeezing it out into the rough shape uh, just to kind of get it wrapped around here. Um, and then uh, I'm actually going to, because of the seams um, where it's going to have to come together, I'm going to try and put that seam kind of underneath so it'll be a little easier to hide. So now that we've got that in there, we have to I'm gonna start just pushing stuff around. So again, this is one of my favorite tools. I actually lost this for a little while in the move. I made this one uh, out of a piece of plastic sprue um, on an old broken dental tool and then just kind of glued that on there because it has a nice little round spot. So having a kind of soft round, but still very firm, still very hard. So you can push things around. Um, oops, on this side. So we're just going to try and push this into place gently. Push into place. Um, and this green stuff I just mixed, so it's it's pretty soft. So we'll be able to really maneuver this stuff and move it around quite a bit. We're just going to push it in, push it in, push it. Like Bob Ross said, no accidents, just happy mistakes. If we get something in a spot we don't like or something we're not happy with, you know, this is Nurgle, so we'll just we'll either cover it up or we'll, we'll we'll dent it up and make it look rusted, or you know, maybe we'll just have some guts laying over any that any of those spots. So we're kind of fortunate with uh, this kind of a model that anything we're not happy with, we can just kind of cover up. So um, again, just kind of pushing this into rough shape right now. We're not too worried. It actually gets, has kind of a <laughs> hammered armor look, which might be kind of cool but not for what I'm going for with this guy so I've done a little bit of that in a couple spots here um, just to kind of make it look like rotted Nurgle so again it's not so much hammered as it is just kind of rotted so we're just pushing this back and forth already you can see it smoothing out quite a bit oops hit the camera there we'll clean that up a little bit with our uh, little uh, clay shaping tool we'll get there um, and yeah, we're just pushing this into place. Sorry, it's hard to do this and keep, keep keeping it in frame. I know that's one of the things I always struggle with, huh? So I'm always just, you guys are in the background yelling, Tim, you, mm, blankety blank. Keep that goddamn guy in frame. Sorry, y'all. All right. All right, I'm just kind of reaching in and uh, pulling it back. So I'm kind of hooking it under here and just kind of pulling it back. I'm sure you can kind of see that, just trying to explain what I'm doing. Push and pull. That's kind of a way to get something where you really want it. If you, if you try and push it too much at once, you can kind of really mess up what you're trying to do. Um, but if you kind of push it one way, pull it another, push it one way, pull it another way, that kind of still keeps everything uh, nice and smooth. So um, so that seam that I we had that I was worried about if it would show, I don't think we're going to be able to see much of that. So. We're almost in the general shape that we're looking for. I don't know what I'm going to sculpt up in there. Right up in... Woo! -hoo! Tickled him a little bit. I didn't like that, I think. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. Maybe just some guts. Who knows? So, um, yeah, just... Uh, it's probably too close to the camera. That's probably why I was having focusing problems. Yeah, we're now just up and down, up and down. Getting to kind of get smoothed out. Now again, it's still pretty soft. If you kind of, depending on what you're trying to do, if you let it uh, cure for a minute, you know, if I let this sit for 15, 20 minutes and come back and sculpt it, um, I would be, I wouldn't be making quite as many dents with this tool. Uh, that's a good start. So we're probably going to go back and forth with a couple tools here. I'm going to be going with this guy now. And um, I'm just uh, pushing it back and forth. And I'm going to poke it straight in there. That's what she said. I don't know if I can get through a video without it. That's what she said joke. So. Yeah, and we're just uh, almost like kind of like painting. Just pushing it up and down, smoothing out anything we see. These tools work really well, especially when it's still kind of soft. Because these tools, again, as you can see, flex... Uh, Flex quite a bit, right? Like they really put it on something like this, right? It really flexes up, so they're pretty soft. 
and I've talked about them in other videos where to find them. Uh, clay shapers on Amazon size zero, and then I think the the color is how firm they are, and I think black is the firmest, which is still pretty soft, all things considered. So we're essentially almost just painting. You know, it almost feels like painting, just smoothing it out. And yes, I do well, lick the tool. I'm trying to keep the licking sound to a minimum so you guys don't hear me. Really like licking this thing. Uh, you can, I've you know I I've tried using water. I don't I don't find it's quite as slippery as long. Um, you know I know some people use like Vaseline. You know this is how I started and how I got used to doing it. So um, it's kind of the technique that I've learned and it's how I how I do it. So. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is as I kind of turn it in the light, see how the light reflects on it like that? And you can see it right there, it's not smooth. That gives me an idea, it makes it just kind of a little easier. I mean, it's probably pretty obvious if that's what's going on, but if that light reflects smooth all around it, then we're in good shape. So yeah, you can see that seam a little bit in there. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera. But still in there a little bit, so it's a good thing we put it on the inside. Right, we're thinking, we're thinking for once, Tim. All right. All right, we're just gonna keep pushing it out, pushing it out, pushing it out. And we're gonna probably go to, I've got a little flat one here, yeah, this bad boy here. It's a little chisel, but we're gonna use the flat side of it just to lift this up, lift it up. All right, starting to look like a piece of armor, right? Keep it in frame, stay on target, stay on target. Ah! All right. Now another thing we need to do, is you'll notice a lot of the Stormcast armor has these little like ridges and little dots. Uh, really easy to do, really easy to do. Um, it's kind of hard to get it quite that crisp, but um, when you don't have it, comparing directly next to something else. Like if I was trying to extend that line, it might be a little more difficult. Uh, but essentially all I'm gonna do is uh, just kind of like, almost like what we were doing before with pulling this over, is I'm gonna push this up. Push, 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 push. And then I'm gonna kind of be pushing into it and down. Into it and down, see like that. And then I can kind of paint back up to keep it smooth. Push it down, push it down, push it down, push it down. Push it down, push it down, push it down. And then we're gonna kind of lift it back up. Lift it back up, lift it back up, and look. Look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Easy peasy. Uh, depending on how long you let this cure, um, this tool again being kind of on the softer side, you know, using something like this guy that I was just using, uh, might do it as well. And then we're just going to try to get everything nice and smooth. And then for the love of Nurgle, I think we're going to damage this armor a little bit. Um, I think right here, this would be kind of fun to paint, but I also think that that's a, a good spot for some, uh, for some damage. So we're just smoothing this out till we're happy with it. Again, it's Nurgle. I'm going to be probably doing a patina effect sort of to match my other Stormcast. Because um, I've got a... For the um, Shadow Spire, I'm definitely going to get that Stormcast set. That female Stormcast, I just think is an awesome model. Like, it's not overly feminine. It's clearly a woman, but she is ready to lay the friggin' smack down. So um, what I'm planning on doing with those is uh, really trying to, to full 100% um, best possible quality painting I can do um, of like this cool marble effect. Um, I think like a marble and like a red hot like uh, iron kind of weapons kind of situation uh, would look pretty cool so then my Nurgle guys can have uh, uh, the patina again. So let's put something in here. I don't know what this is going to look like. Again this particular tool guys right has a little bit of a point on one side. It's like teardrop shaped. So um, that's really helpful when trying to do um, like the rotted armor look I've noticed because you don't want uh, you don't want all your dots being the same size, so we're just gonna start damaging this a little. Put one in, put one in, put one in. 
And then we're gonna put in maybe a big one in the middle. That. All right. Now, because when you push in, it kind of pushes everything else out around it. You gotta smooth all that out. So just paint around it, paint around it. Just kind of smoothing everything out. Smoothing everything out. All right, that looks too nice still. So what we're gonna do is, you remember this custom job I did from the old tip of a Tomb King whip? Still works and it does really nice fine points and really good for doing like And I can kind of spin it around as I go in. All right. And then we're going to push in. Push in. Not really kind of what I want to look like just yet. So I'm going to kind of push this back in. It's not really the look I was looking for. So I'm just using the corner, just trying to rough up some of those shapes here. I think what we need to do is, I think we just need to fully commit. So let's just destroy this. So now we've got a hole in the armor there. Got a hole in the armor there. For holes, this works a little bit better. Put them right there. And then we're hooking on the inside, just lifting it back up. Hooking on the inside, lifting it back up. Hooking on the inside. Hooking on the inside. And then let's try this. Again, I'm, I'm kind of learning this as we go here too, so. But don't be afraid to just get in there and go at it. That actually looks... Uh, Kind of cool. I could keep going at it, but I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Let's, uh, you know what? It actually feels like it needs a little bit, uh, a little bit more right here. So let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, let's do, uh, one other thing here. I'm going to do the same sort of thing I did to make those little dents, and we're just going to push in. Push in. Push in from the top. And then smooth everything out. Just to make a little, and then push in down here. Just to make a little rivet. Like it's on the bottom. And just smooth everything out. Smooth it out. Smooth it back out this way, because if you look at the light, right, we've created a flat spot. We've created a monster. No one means to see Martian no more. They want shady. I'm chopped liver. Well, if you want shady, this is what I'll give you. A little bit of weed mixed with some hard liquor. Some vodka to eat. start hot. Jump start to quicker. Oh, I messed that up. Sorry, y'all. More focus on my painting than my rapping. But, um, yeah, I'm probably going to be putting some Nurgle stuff around the back, so I'm not going to try and get another one in there, but there, we got a little rivet. Right? Easy peasy. I almost wasn't going to do it, but I figured, you know what? You're going to do it, and you're going to do it right if you're going to do it. And then we just push everything back into place. Takes a, takes a gentle touch. Takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. If anybody can tell me what that's from, I'll be incredibly surprised. I'll give you a hint. It's a sequel to a movie, and it was from the mid-80s to late 80s, maybe early 90s. Uh, and if your name's Ian Wright, you know what it is. Don't spoil it for everybody else. Or go ahead and spoil it, because nobody's probably going to get it. Um, so there you have it, ladies and germs. Um, yeah, so I definitely have some uh, more spinner videos coming up. I uh, want to do some cleaning um, and uh, kind of flicking techniques with spinners. Um, but I also have a ton of Kingdom Death miniatures um, I want to kind of review um, uh, and kind of go over because I got a bunch of those. The Kickstarter ended um, back around um, uh, Christmas, New Year, and so I got a ton of that stuff coming and it's going to come over the next couple years. That old Kingdom Death Kickstarter is pretty sweet. But uh, 
yeah, so those are a couple things you can look forward to. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of a little bit of hobby, a little bit of green stuff, Nurgled armor. I guess we'll call this video. So uh, that will be it for now. Hey, oh, whoa, way too close. Can I get my thumb in the shot? Peace.